Hey, good morning guys. It's Aaron. Welcome back to the channel. I just realized I have a beard again. So I'm home from work today. It's Friday and Beth and I have to go get fingerprinted this afternoon. We'll, we'll delve into that a little later. I'm going to have her bring the camera when we go do it. So I want to wait till she's up to talk about all of that, but I want to do just first tell you how awesome she is. I had been talking for a while about, um, making some dietary changes. Uh, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm, I'm six, three, and I should be walking around about 225 or 230, but I'm somewhere in the 250 range right now. And I don't know if it's, I've, I've been a little less active in the summer, but the biggest contributor is, um, I don't bring my lunch to work anymore. So instead of eating what I'm supposed to be eating, I go to Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, Cane's, or any other random chicken place or Whataburger or Taco Bell or any place where you can basically eat all of your daily caloric intake in one meal. So what I used to do, um, I had some GI issues about 10 years ago and so I did an elimination diet and went to the allergist and I had all these tests done and I, apparently, allegedly, uh, allergic to gluten, yeast, soy, and dairy, which is basically everything that is in a grocery store. So what I would do is I would bring like some deli sliced meat and cheese, even though, you know, I wasn't supposed to have it is a debatable and like an apple or something and I use the term lunchable so you know I've been thinking about this for a while I, t I talked to Beth about it and I use the term lunchable and here's what she did look at that she sat down Sunday afternoon last weekend and she ripped up some lunch meat and cut up some cheese and some strawberries and put some mixed nuts in here and I think she made four of these. She said it only took her like five to ten minutes to to make all four of the lunches. So that's pretty awesome, right? I, I think it is. Um, she's very supportive. And I really appreciate that. So I wanted to share that with you guys. She'll be up in a bit. And we'll get into the whole reason why we're going to do this today. Most of you probably will guess if you've been watching us for any length of time. Um, this kind of started, I had to go get uh, a form signed by the doctor. And so she goes, why don't we schedule a wellness exam? And I was like, I really don't want to do that, but I did it. So they did a blood test. It was non-fasting, but um, everything was good, except for whatever reason, my triglycerides were a little high and my cholesterols were fine and i think um my kidney function was a little little less than what it should be there was something in there that indicated my kidneys were working not as well as they should i don't i don't know the medical terms so in addition to this lunch thing i got some of those um those little packets that you flavor your water with uh, so I can drink more water and I don't I don't mind water normally But you can only drink so much of it before you're just like I'm sick of water So as soon as she gets up We'll probably hit the road and we'll talk more then I said, I want to 
wait till Beth is awake so we can talk about it together. Ah. Um, is there anything in your background that we need to know about? No. No drunken arrests? Okay, people, I don't really talk about where I work. People don't know this. I'm squeaky clean. My fingerprints are already in the federal database. There's nothing about me they don't already know. The federal government, that is. And as you guys know, I had to go through a pretty rigorous background check for American Airlines to make sure I'm not a terrorist. <laughs> I'm a cuddle terrorist. That's about yeah, it. I can, I can vouch for that. But, um, so I should have a squeaky clean background too. Yeah. I, um, if you don't count the expired car tag that we've already taken care of. I do have a pretty substantial scar on one finger from opening a cat food tin um, about 15 or so years ago. So. So what does that have to do with anything? I'm just saying that if, if, I, if you ever need to identify me through fingerprints, it's uh, very easy. I think it's pretty easy anyway, if they can get a fingerprint. Mm. They can get a fingerprint, it's just going to have a big slice through it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the next step. Babe. What? What does this color say to you? Um, minty fresh? supposed to say you're in a safe and loving place now. It says a waterscape. But it's supposed to say you're in a safe and loving space now. Do you get that feeling? That's not the right one. No. Oh, I just wanted to look. Um, I think that's the most safe and loving color out of the three. Out of the three? Yeah. Oh, no. Well. I have to have a basis of comparison. Oh, let me see. And just in general, it's supposed to be a safe and loving gender neutral color. Gender neutral for me? <laughs> gender neutral. <laughs> Look at these curtains. Maybe we should get some gender neutral. Those aren't fun enough. Okay, why does it need to be gender neutral? Because we could be getting boys or girls. From who? Boy or girl kittens. Kittens, right. So here is what we're working with. This is the spare bedroom, which before now has been the foster kitten room. Yes, they got their own room. And this is what we're painting and getting ready. Hi. Hi. We are going to do this minty color wall and go from this peachy cream to white. Because it's got to be gender neutral. I'm just observing. I've gotten in trouble for assuming a raccoon's gender. I'm not making that mistake again. So, are you excited? About what? About what's gonna happen. Are we, are, am I, can I talk about that? Sure. Or, um, yes and no. Oh. What do you mean, oh? Why no? How much do the people on the other side of the camera know? Nothing. Okay. Um, on the one hand, it can be very rewarding. On the other hand, it can be exactly the opposite. <laughs> True. It's 50-50. We don't know what we're going to get. True. And even if it's a good experience, it's going to come to an end at some point, most likely. True. Which will be heartbreaking. Right. So, bittersweet, I guess, is what you would say. Tell them what we're doing. Is that allowed? Yeah. 
So we have apparently passed the background check. They never said that we did, but they wanted us to go get fingerprinted and we are gonna be a foster home for the Department of Human Services in Oklahoma. Obviously we live in Oklahoma, so I mean, that's, that's where we're doing it. <laughs> so our home inspection is what? Two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. As you can see, we're ready to go. <laughs> and actually, I still need to get you next door to talk to the neighbors. Our next door neighbors were a foster family and they fostered, I think, two different sets of siblings. And they actually got to adopt the second. So they have a little boy and a little girl and they just adopted them a little over a year ago. but. They fostered for like, I think five or six years. Um, and they're and, super cute. And half of that was the other siblings. I don't know if they were boys or girls or what. Yeah. But the boy and girl they have now, I think they fostered them for at least a year and a half. Maybe. I don't know. And then miraculously they got to adopt them. The boy is young enough that he doesn't remember anything. And the little girl seems well adjusted enough. Uh, she's so sweet um, that I don't think she's going to have any problems as she gets older. So that's what we're up to. Yeah. That's why we had to get our fingerprints done. Mm hmm. That's why we're painting the room and getting it ready, turning it from the cat domicile into the children domicile. Correction. That's why Beth is painting the room. Oh, true. I'm the furniture assembler. Etc. Again, I'm the manual labor. And he's also the checkbook. <laughs> and he just made a joke about the fact that um, he said, you know how there's like parental controls for children so that they can't go in and like buy microtransactions on games and stuff. He's like, is there like a spousal control for you? Because so far I bought like bunk beds and a rug and mattresses and sheets and stuff, toys and I mean all necessary stuff. Right. But apparently. No, I, that's not actually, that's not what I was referring to when I said that. But um, we actually talked about all that stuff. You can call me the finance committee, I guess, if for lack of a better word. But... Um, no, we talked about that and it's all good. We were supposed to go today to some place that's, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine miles away. I don't know how far. But they've got like um, repurposed like kids books and stuff so we can get some books for bedtime stories and I don't know what else they've got. Maybe they got some Tonka trucks or some Hot Wheels or probably not Cabbage Patch. Those are collectors, right? You're very 80s right now, talking about Tonka you know trucks. You how old I am. <laughs> cabbage patch. I'm pretty sure it's like totally different things now. Well, I'm sure it is, but whatever the modern day equivalent is, that's not electronic. That will be fun. We'll definitely have to take them along to go... Lincoln Logs. Toy shopping. Lincoln Logs. I have to paint the room now. Okay, get, get painting. Okay. Get to work. One, two, three, go. I don't know why it's focusing on me. Because you're the handsome one? I don't think so. Are you calling me handsome? I'm so much darker than you. Yeah. What's it like to be in an interracial relationship? <laughs> I don't know. You're the one Hi, Yumi. in a relationship with a alabaster <laughs> goddess. Isn't it about time to put on your... Hey! Isn't it about time to put on your Han Solo uniform and get a pumpkin spice latte? I don't know what that means. You're I, a white girl. I really, How do you not know what that means? I don't like pumpkin spice lattes. Know, you know this. It's terrible. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Okay. So, that's what we're up to. And the focus right now is to get approved to be a foster home. And... We're going to take you guys along on the journey and 
If you have fostered, please leave us some comments and let us know some tips because I'm sure we will need all the help we can get going from a no child household to who knows what. I feel like there should have been something in between kittens and then kids. Like, that's a leap. You think? Like, shouldn't we have, like, tried a mini horse or... Oh, can I have a mini horse? An iguana. Iguana. Komodo dragon. I don't know, because kittens, let's see, we had projectile vomiting. We had projectile pooping. (laughs) You had it shooting out of both ends at the same time. (laughs) Pooping. We had... um, It's glamorous. Waking up every two hours to bottle feed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like it was a pretty good... Okay. What did you say about uh, how Abe and Lola might be preparing us for the opposite ends of the spectrum? Oh, because I said Abe is like aloof and doesn't communicate and uh, doesn't want to be touched and then there's lola who's bipolar and aggressive (laughs) but runs up to you so it's like you never know what to expect so i feel like we could get we could get some kids like that okay um stay tuned for the room reveal i'm still painting i'm still buying it's not as bad as i thought I shouldn't have told her that today. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> well, I still haven't. We we still need to get a dining room table, which we haven't gotten in. <laughs> like we we've literally been meaning to do it for like four years or something. Yeah, and at we least. have to do it before the home study because we just want to pretend like we're grown ups. And you know, when yeah. the worker comes, we want to be like, let's sit at the dining room table and talk. I didn't agree to that. What do you mean? I was going to be comfortable in the living room. I don't know how that's going to work. Wrap it up, Byron. My my arm's getting tired. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for watching, guys. Love you. See you next time. Bye.